G'day and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna help you make the choice whether you need to invest in a tripod, a monopod, a gimbal, a flexi head, a ball head. What do all these things mean? What are the pros? What are the cons? I've used all this gear in the field. I'm a professional wildlife photographer and I will be giving you my honest opinion about these things. All right, so let's try and answer the most important question. Do we need any of this gear to enjoy wildlife photography? And the answer is, no, you don't. You don't need any tripods or gimbals or anything. All you need is your camera and your lens and yourself and your passion and get out there and just take photos. Now I ask my members and my subscribers, do they shoot handheld with a monopod or with a tripod? And here's the results. And I was actually shocked and surprised to see that 82% of people prefer just to handhold. And that's actually gone up from 71% just over a year ago when I ran that poll. Less and less people are using tripods, monopods, etc. And the question is why? Why aren't people using these anymore? And the big and obvious answer is that lenses are just getting lighter, IS is getting better, and it's just a lot easier to shoot handheld. There's not faffing about carrying all this extra weight, setting it up. When you're shooting handheld, we can just adapt and we can move and we can just take photos, and it's just a lot more fun. So to demonstrate the flexibility of shooting handheld, I shot with the Sony 200-600 and the Sony a7 Mark IV in the field recently. Now I've turned up at the location, the sun was coming up, I didn't have a lot of time, I've just grabbed the camera and I started moving around. I spotted a cockatoo in the top of a tree, I've taken a shot and I wasn't quite right, I was too close, I had to move backwards, the sun was just popping up, went into uh, portrait mode, took a shot and I was pretty happy with that. And then the birds moved position and it started looking this way. The sun's not in the right place, so I'm madly moving to get the sun to the left of the frame. The birds are looking this way. Uh, I took a shot in horizontal or landscape. Didn't look that good because I didn't like the side bits. So I've had to go into portrait, move around, frame it up, got a shot. And then the birds taken off and we got my favorite shot of the session. And I absolutely loved this shot. Now, to get that photo, I've moved four, five, six times, constantly moving, taking photos, recomposing. That would have been almost impossible if I'd been on a tripod, because I'm having to lift it, put it down, lift it, put it down. Am I high enough? Am I low enough? Just it would have been impossible. So shooting handheld enables you to quickly adapt to situations and adjust your composition on the fly. And it's just so much quicker and so much easier than using a tripod. And I believe that's probably the main reason why people enjoy shooting handheld. So there's a number of other advantages to hand holding. Bird in flight is much easier. I prefer to track a bird through the sky through the viewfinder and being able to move. I just feel a little bit um, restricted on the gimbal as I'm going through the sky. I've done this on Pelagics where you're on a boat in the ocean. The boat's moving, you're moving, and you're trying to track the birds. It'd be pretty hard on a tripod. Managed to get this awesome albatross just gliding over the water with this 405.6. Love that image. If you haven't done Pelagics, you need to do it. It's absolutely incredible. Another massive advantage is we don't have to carry these tripods and gimbals with us when we travel. They just take up so much space in your luggage. I went to the sub-Antarctic, I took all this gear with me in my luggage and carry-on, and it was just too much to be honest. And when I was on, the, on these islands, I actually didn't even use the tripod that often. I often just went with handheld like I did with this elephant seal or I did it with this Southern Royal Albatross. I just found it a bit easier to, to leave the tripod behind. Another advantage is when we're actually tracking a subject through the bush, or we're trying to be as quiet as possible, you know, when you're just sort of stalking through the bush. It's a quite hard to go through the bush holding the, it like this, because your legs end up catching on twigs and branches. Throw it over our shoulder, we've then got our legs sticking out quite a, a far away, you know, and they might hit things and trying to get around, and the birds will see you moving around. So stalking is quite difficult with a big tripod as well. Now a member who just loves hand holding is Matthew Stark. He's got an R7 and 100 to 500. He leaves it in the car next to him as you can see here. And when he sees an opportunity, he just grabs his camera and goes into the bush and he photographed this cardinal, just tracked it through the bush. He said it would have been almost impossible with a tripod because of how thick that scrub was. So uh, just goes to show that flexibility again keeps coming up with hand holding. And another reason why people are abandoning tripods has to do with just how good these modern lenses and cameras are for image stabilization. Most bodies, mirrorless, now have image stabilization in the camera. The lenses are fantastic and it just enables you to shoot at really low shutter speeds. So for example, here's my original kit, my 40D and 405.6. I couldn't really shoot this handheld under 1 400th of a second because there's no image stabilization at all with this kit. Whereas this one here, this is the RF 100-400, the R7, I forget what it is, it might be six or seven stops of image stabilization. What that means is I can shoot 
azure kingfishers at 1 50th of a second and still be sharp. So the difference there is just incredible. It's not to say you can't use old gear handheld, you definitely can. You just have to have your shutter speed a little bit higher than you would with this modern equipment. And somebody who has used a lot of old gear is my member Pia, and unbelievably, she has amassed almost two and a half thousand different species. And one photo I wanna share with you is actually from a 20D, so it's even older than my 40D, and a 300 F4, it does have IS, that's a great combo not that expensive and she photographed this incredible Andean emerald bird. It is absolutely beautiful and goes to show what you can do with old gear. Pia also shared this photo of her and her partner trying to photograph some sea life. It would be very difficult to do this with a tripod. Something else that's also improved over the years is the straps that you can get to hold your gear as you're walking. I haven't tried them myself, I need to. Let me know in the comments what straps that you use. But remember Jack sent me this photo. He's standing there with his R7 and RF100 to 400. He's got it on a strap and it just holds it next to him and he can walk around, pull it up and shoot quite quickly. And a number of people have sent me their shots with their straps, so something I need to look into. So I've mentioned numerous advantages to hand holding. The question is, why would anyone not hand hold? Why would anyone want a tripod or a monopod? What's the reason? The obvious one is just the weight of your kit. Some kits are just way too heavy. In the old days, most of these big lenses, if you wanted focal length, weighed a ton. And some of them weighed up to sort of eight kilos combined. It was just too heavy to hand hold. For me, this 1DX and this 500F4 is close to five kilos. So for me, I'm not that strong. If I want to hand hold this, I, I can definitely do it like for short burst. Eventually my arms are going to fatigue and I'm going to get tired. I'm going to start shaking and my images are just going to get soft. That's why I have a tripod and that's why I've predominantly shot on tripods is because my gear is just too heavy. And I think this is a mistake many beginners make. They have like a 400 millimeter lens and they think, oh, I need 600 millimeters. I need more focal length. And they go out and buy a Sigma 150 to 600 or the Sony 200 to 600. And majority of these 600 millimeter lenses are actually two kilos or more. You add a body on that, you're looking at close to three kilos. And unless you're quite strong, you're going to struggle to hand hold that. And that's when we go for a tripod or a monopod. So the obvious advantage to tripods is we can actually shoot at slower shutter speeds and remove motion blur because we're not shaking. It's quite steady. It's very stable if you've got a good tripod and you can sort of shoot with those lower shutter speeds and that's definitely an advantage. So one example I remember where I definitely needed a tripod is I was shooting with the Sigma 150 to 600 and I can hand hold that no problem majority of the time. However, there was a tawny frog mouth in a tree and I was waiting for that bird to open its eyes. So I'm holding it and I'm holding it and then my arms are getting tired, my arms are getting tired. The birds finally opened its eyes and I've rattled off some shots, but I was so fatigued that the majority of the shots were actually soft. Now I thought, oh, I can't do this. So I've run back to the car, I've got a tripod, I've put the camera and the lens on the tripod, waited, waited, the birds opened its eyes, I've taken the shots and the majority of them were sharp. It was night and day between hand holding and the tripod, definitely in low light, low shutter speeds. So in that circumstance, it definitely helped me. So a member who's been using a tripod for a very long time is member Will. He's actually been using the same tripod for 50 years. That's just incredible. Now he uses it to photograph sort of uh, flies and macro type style where you're waiting for the subject to land on a flower or whatever it is. And you want to be as steady as possible. Maybe you want to focus stack or do something like that. That's when a tripod is ideal. The other times you'll probably need a tripod is shooting video. When you're shooting video, it's very hard to keep video stable. I know the latest Canons are very, very good with their IS, but ideally, if you're shooting video, you wanna be on a tripod. I know the majority of you don't shoot video, but it's just something you need to consider if you are gonna go into video, a tripod is almost a necessity. So if you've decided to get a tripod, there's a few key things that I believe are really, really important. The first one is the height of the tripod. You should be able to stand at your tripod, eye on the viewfinder, and sort of photograph the birds without too much issue. For me, I'm six foot or 183 centimeters. I want the tripod to be at least sort of 1.5 meters tall, 150 centimeters tall. Once we put a ball head on that and the foot of the camera and the lens then brings it up to sort of eye level for me. And we do not really want to use a center column. So a lot of cheap tripods use a center column. Why don't you want that? Well, it creates, it's just a weak point and it will move and flex and carry on. Ideally, we don't want that. The other thing we want is the weight. We don't want it to be too heavy. These modern tripods are usually carbon fiber and they don't weigh that much. This tripod here, this is about 1.8 kilos. 
And of, of course, we want it to be extremely steady. Some cheaper tripods will flex and move. This one is very sturdy. Like this is a five kilo kit on top of it and it's steady and I can shoot without worrying about everything moving. So we have to make sure that it's nice and steady. And probably the third thing is just how smooth the legs come in and out. We don't want to struggle with the legs. We don't want them locking up and we want it to just be easy to open and close so we're not faffing about wasting time setting them up. Tripods that meet all that criteria is the Suray AR3204 and the iFootage TC7. Now I've kindly been sent these two tripods to test. I've used them both in the field and they're both equally good. However, they do have a few differences. I'll start with the TC7 from iFootage. This is a beautiful tripod. It currently retails for around $289 US. I think that's great value for this tripod. It's made of carbon fiber, uh, stainless steel. The quality of iFootage is always excellent. I'm very, very happy with that. As mentioned earlier, it's 1.55 meters tall. It weighs 1.8 kilos. It's overall just a brilliant design. So the point of difference with this tripod is it actually uses a buckle instead of a twist lock to adjust the legs. And some people will say, well, twist lock is faster than the buckle. So I did a quick test to see which one I could set up the quickest. And on the screen, you can see me setting up the iFootage and the Suray and because the iFootage only has six buckles as opposed to the nine twist locks I was able to set up the iFootage much much quicker so it's only dual legs two legs instead of the three legs and I actually prefer the buckle system personally because often what happens with me with the twist legs is when I'm uh, in the field I forget which way to twist and I often undo it instead of locking and I end up wasting time with the twist lock. Now this is completely subjective, it's personal preference which one you prefer. For me I just prefer the buckle as opposed to the twist but again that's entirely up to you. The other thing these two tripods have which is pretty cool is they have a leveling head on them. So if you don't know what that means is we can if you're on unlevel ground and you want to level it, you can just undo this middle bit and it has this cup or leveling head where we can move it around and then lock it up. So both of them offer that. and They're just slightly different, but they both offer that same sort of thing. And it's actually quite handy, saves you having to move the legs up and down. You can just do it from the ball head. Now the Suray, you can lock this so that it's just a locked base. These three metal pins come out to keep it nice and steady. Another awesome feature of the iFootage is you can actually change from a rubber foot to a spike just by turning the rubber knob. It's actually brilliant. It's a really, really good idea that you've got the spike or the rubber foot without having to remove them. On the Suray, it has separate metal spikes that you have to unscrew and then screw in. I mean, that's fine, but for me, I would probably lose those things and it would be highly annoying if you lost one of the feet. So I think iFootage definitely gets the um, tick there. Now the Suray is definitely a sturdier tripod. It's got a higher payload. I think this is, I'll put it on the screen, it's 20 something kilos. I think this is much lighter, maybe nine or 10 kilos. The build quality is absolutely fantastic. There's no issue whatsoever. This one is also carbon fiber. They both have these auto lock where you can change the angle on the legs and it just auto locks into place. So which one would I choose personally? I think the iFootage offers better value for money. If you want a sturdier tripod with twist locks, then the Suray obviously offers that uh, benefit. But ideally, you can't go wrong with either of these tripods. So I decided to do you all a favor and I've decided to buy one of the cheapest tripods that I could find on Amazon. And I ended up getting the newer N55C. It says it's carbon fiber. It says it has a payload of 12.9 kilos or something like that. It looked good online as they do. The reviews were fine, so I thought, I'll buy it, I'll take a risk. I think it was about $100 or something Australian. Anyway, it's turned up and um, it's not fit for purpose. It is not very strong at all. It's center column and I said you shouldn't get center column. And you can see once we put a heavy lens on it, look how much this shakes. It's, I'm actually scared to use it. It's almost gonna break in half. It just can't handle the weight of that big 500 millimeter lens and I would not be confident using it. It feels cheap, it just is cheap. And unfortunately, it was just a waste of money. And I don't want you making that mistake. I don't want you buying a cheap tripod thinking it's gonna be perfect and getting it and it's just not. One of my members, Arlo, has actually picked himself up a relatively cheap tripod that had a ball head. He currently uses that with his Nikon 200 to 500 and his Z50. He managed to get this amazing shot of a Tomtit. And I think this cost around uh, 120 US dollars for ball head and uh, tripod. So you can definitely get these things at a cheaper cost and use them. Um, I'm just not sure exactly which is the best one. Let me know in the comments which tripod you're using. What's the best 
cheapest tripod that can handle the weight and it's not going to break or flex like this newer one. All right, so now that you've got a tripod, we need some way to put the heavy lenses on top of the tripods. Now, most people have a ball head. A lot of the time they come with the tripod. Can you use a ball head? Yes, you can, Arlo showed that. But the issue we have is if we don't have the friction right on the knob, we get lens flop and that's really dangerous. Lens flop is when you let go of the lens and it just bangs down or falls backwards. And that can cause your whole tripod to go over. We do not want that to happen. We don't want any damage. And it's just slightly risky using a ball head. And there is a better option. And that I believe is what's called a gimbal. I've been using a gimbal for a long time. This one here is the PH20 from Suray and it is beautiful. It is so smooth. You've got panning, you've got tilting. I literally can sort of one finger this, you know, this, this weight. And it's just incredible that you have that flexibility and that movement. And I know many of you do use these. Once it's perfectly balanced, it's just an absolute joy to use. When I started, there was no way I could afford one of these sorts of tripod heads. So I went online and I found a much cheaper alternative on eBay, I think it was. So I ordered that one, it might've been about $100 Australian. Now I destroyed that pretty quickly because I got salt in it and the uh, knob broke. The side wasn't keeping it tight. It was just, it only lasted me a year or two years and um, before I upgraded to a more expensive one. But what I've done is I've actually gone online and I've bought one of the cheap ones. I've bought a 90 odd dollar newer gimbal head and you know, it actually is okay. Now the major issue with this one, and you'll read this in the reviews, is it's actually quite tight. To actually move it, the grease is almost too thick. We don't have very, uh, see this one I can just, side to side no issue this one friction there we just don't have that flexible movement so i know a lot of people if you're handy you can pull this apart remove the grease put in some different grease so you can get that movement the actual um, tilting is fine it's actually not too bad it's better made than the tripod by far so i think you know if you're on a budget one of these will probably do you fine until you can afford a more expensive uh, gimbal head. So one of the downsides to these gimbals is just their size. They're quite bulky and they take up a bit of space in your luggage. They're not that heavy, about 1.1 kilos or 2.4 pounds. There are smaller gimbals available. This one here is the Suray PH10. Purchased this with my own money. I use it on my ground pod to get me nice and low and it's definitely lighter. It's a couple of hundred grams lighter and it's a little bit cheaper as well. I think this one's 289 US, whereas this one's 360. So if the size of the gimbal is too much for you, there is another option. And I've only just recently been sent this and this is the Flex Shooter Pro and it's a type of ball head. It's a spring-loaded ball head that gives you gimbal-like movement. So it has our panning and it has our tilting, just like a gimbal. However, it doesn't have the size. How it works is we get it level with the outer ball. We lock that down, it's now level. We then try and balance the camera so that we can leave it in position and there's no lens flop because it's spring loaded. The ball head is spring loaded. So there's no risk of the lens falling over and you know us losing it. There's a silver knob on the side which adjusts our friction to see how tight we want it. But it sort of gives us that same sort of flexibility that we get with the gimbal, but it's much, much smaller. Now. I think it's brilliant um, and it works as a ball head as well so you can use it as a traditional ball head so it's great for macro it's great for landscapes it's really good for video the other thing that this version has is the clamp at the front we just undo the clamp and then away we go if you're wanting to go to handheld perhaps you had a bird flying past or something like that we can put it back on and then clamp it down it's definitely quicker than the uh, undoing on the side you can get one of those clamps for the gimbal if you wanted. But overall, I've been pretty impressed with it. Now, the one thing I've noticed is we don't get quite the same sort of <laughs> tilt. This one here can almost go straight up and down and all the way to the ground. Whereas this one, we've definitely got that restricted tilt movement. You can overcome that by undoing the outer ball head. So we can sort of get that same movement if we use the ball head, but it's just a little bit, then we've got the risk of the flop going on. So it's not ideal. And then we've got to level it again. Now this flexi head is a premium product. It comes in at 699 US, I think for this version, there is a 599 version without the clamp, I believe. So that is a big investment. I think if you didn't have a gimbal and you wanted something that could do it all, so you wanted the ball head, the gimbal-like features, then this is a really, really good option. It's extremely well made. And I know lots of people do love it. Um, if you've already got a gimbal, 
it's really up to you whether you want to reduce the size. If you want to get away from this and sort of go to this lighter, smaller option, then the flexi head is definitely a way to do it. So as we know, tripods can be a bit of a pain to walk around in the bush, setting them up, the legs, etc., the weight, it's just a hassle. If we've got a heavy lens and we don't want to handhold, what's the other alternative? The other alternative is a monopod one leg obviously and these are much lighter and they're much easier to get around with and I know lots of people love these. I did a full review of this one, this is the C180 Mark II carbon fibre, absolutely brilliant, absolutely love it. Do use this monopod, it's got a really cool tripod, mini tripod on the base of it which I've actually used quite a bit on next to the lake or whatever on its own without the rest of the monopod. So it's like a two in one, I suppose, which is very, very handy. And that gives you sort of this ball head movement at the base, which allows you to well, move the monopod around. One of the weaknesses of monopods is when you mount a lens directly on top of it, you have to move backwards and forwards to get the tilt motion. It can be quite hard to get the correct tilt, especially when the birds are up in the trees or whatever. Um, how do we get around that? Well, Wimbley make an absolutely incredible product and so many of you use this and so many of you told me to get it. Um, I was actually reluctant to buy it because it's quite expensive uh, for me here in Australia. I think it's close to 300 Australian dollars. Bit the bullet, I've actually ordered it, paid for it myself. It arrived, I've whacked it on this monopod and it's just incredible how well this works. And I'll just demonstrate to you. So we've got this little uh, MH100. I've put it straight on top of the monopod and it works like a gimbal and gives you that tilt uh, that you need. So I just need to get the lens and on the side here, we've got an Arca Swiss. So I just need to put it on there, tighten it down. Okay, so now I've balanced this heavy five kilo kit on the MH100 and look at this. We've got the tilting motion and it just stays put. And because this monopod has a ball head at the bottom, I also get the panning. I get panning and tilting all at once. Look at this. <laughs> it's effortless and it's almost like a dance move, isn't it? <laughs> and so I can just sort of shoot, 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 shooting in the trees, can change position and it's just so flexible and obviously I can lock it off and just throw it, carry it or throw it over my shoulder and sort of away you go. You could put straps on this if you're worried about it coming off. So I could put straps on the lens around my neck for extra support. But overall, this is just a brilliant setup. Um, if you want a light sort of kit to walk around in the bush to carry such heavy equipment, just fantastic and a really good option. Uh, there's plenty of other monopods available uh, from different brands. I prefer this one just because it works really well and we get that benefit of the extra little mini tripod at the bottom. A member who uses a monopod is uh, member Dan. He shoots with his monopod all the time. He sent me this little video of how he has his setup. He's got this chest strap and he's got the monopod into his chest for extra support. This is a 600 f4 so quite a big lens and body and he also uses it almost as a ground pod as well to take shots. So the only real weakness for me with these monopods is you can't let them go because they'll just fall over. Uh, so if you want to get something out of your bag or move another tripod or do something you have to lay this on the ground and that's less than ideal because sometimes if you're in a dirty or dusty or environment where you don't want your gear laying on the ground it's a little bit of a pain. So one of my members who uses a monopod is member Chris. He sent me his setup. He uses a Vanguard monopod. He uses my same MH100 head and he uses his Olympus OM-1 and 300 F4 Pro. Eagle-eyed viewers will spot he's actually got a red dot or a red sight attached to his lens which helps him find the subjects. I probably need to try one of those especially for long focal length but he loves his kit and he enabled him to get this shot of a rainbow beater um, which he's very happy with. So plenty of people love their uh, monopods. So I've been very appreciative that iFootage sent me this monopod because I absolutely love it. All right, the last thing I want to share is how do we get low to the ground? With tripods, we can put the legs out, but it's a bit of a mission to try and get the legs out and we can't actually get that low. Why do we want to get low? Because to get low with water birds, shore birds, we get a much better angle. So you would have seen in my videos, I use a ground pod, a skimmer ground pod. It's just like a bit of hard plastic with a 3 8 bolt on the top. Now, they are quite expensive for what they are. I think they're $100, $120 US. Lots of people just make their own. They get an Ikea frying pan or a wok, put a 3 8 bolt in yourself. Then you get a gimbal or ball head or whatever you're using, a flex shooter, and you just mount it onto that 3 8 bolt. And then you put your camera and your lens on your head and you have this really low shooting angle 
like so and you put your camera and your lens on there and away you go and you can shoot that way. So it's a, an essential piece of kit really for low shooting, low angle shooting. Uh, again, you can make your own. So a member who created his own ground pod was Parval. He sent me this image. He's actually got his frying pan the other way around which gives him a nice stable base so you can have it that way or the other way around enabled him to capture this beautiful mallard shot nice low angle great light just a beautiful photo Pavel also uses a monopod that you can see here that he's shared with us a couple of things i haven't mentioned today is the bean bag i need to get one if you don't know what that is uh, lens coat seller bean bag you can put it on the window of your car it has a threat bolt you can put your gimbal on there use that uh, I sort of mentioned straps earlier, that's definitely another thing that you can use for support. Look, let me know in the comments what you currently use, what have you found to be extremely helpful, uh, what monopod do you use, what tripod do you use, what gimbal do you use. Get a conversation going, it definitely helps other people. Which one's right for you? I think for the majority of people, hand holding will always win out. However, if you do need extra support, tripod or a monopod, it really comes down to the right tool for the job. So remember Gary highlights this perfectly, he uses tripods, monopods and handheld and a lot of people have both. A lot of people have a tripod and a monopod and they just take which one suits them best and what they're doing. If they're walking and shooting, perhaps just a monopod or hand holding. If you're sitting at a blind for hours on end waiting for birds to turn up, then a tripod is essential um, and very, very helpful. So I hope you enjoyed this content. Obviously give it that thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you want to support the channel, you can become a paying member. You'll see little emojis next to people's names in the comments, little birds. That means they're a member. For the price of less than a cup of coffee, you directly support the channel. I created a really cool 2023 digital calendar that you can download for your laptop, for your computer, for your tablet. They're all 4K. They're all high quality photos. Um, I hope you enjoy that. You can get that for free. Thanks to the members that have just recently joined. I really appreciate it. Until the next video, happy birding. Take care and see you later. So a member who just loves shooting handheld is Richie. He's got his camera, his lens, his camo gear, and he just goes out and photographs birds and has a great time. And member Boyd loves just shooting handheld under his camo blind, similar to the one I have. And he managed to capture this beautiful Fuscus honey eater 